Good morning and welcome to Pembroke Software. Um, today we are, my name, is, my name is Sharon Foley and I'll be going through the webinar for Stage 50 and Excel integration. Uh, just a little housekeeping, um, we're going to have everyone on mute, um, so just to avoid any background noise and with there is a chat box there that you can, if you have any questions if you want to put them in the chat box and we will go through them at the end. So today I'm going to give you a brief overview of Today I'm going to go through and um, give you a bit brief overview of Pembroke and who we are uh, for those of you who don't know us. I'm going to show you some of our test customer testimonials and I'm going to go through the list of features that we'll be covering and then we're going to jump into the demo. We will have some time, hopefully, for some questions um, at the end. For any reason you don't get to all your questions, I will put up our contact details and you can email them into us. So first of all, Pinbrook was formed following the merger of Sage Business Partners, PIM, PIMS Business Systems and Brooks Software, um, combining PIMS expertise in Sage 50 and payroll with Brooks expertise in Sage 200, Sage 200 and warehouse management. Uh, we currently service over 1,300 clients and we're a voted Sage 50 Irish Business Partner of the Year. Um, we do take pride on our products and services and we try to we deliver um, for our products which include Sage 1, uh, Sage 50, Sage 200 and Sage Payroll. Uh, we firmly committed on our customer, uh, uh, customer service um, and we have a strong focus on our customer service and here's some of our testimonials that customers have said have said about us and um, so we are truly professional most efficient committed and uh, Pembroke have been excellent throughout uh, for best company we've ever used and find the staff most helpful and uh, the product knowledge and customer care is second to none and uh, so we hope to strive and move forward with these uh, with our customer care and we keep going um, with the best customer service. Uh, on our webinar today we're going to go through um, from Sage 50 we're going to show you how to show, show you how to do some basic filters for customers and suppliers your audit train and send them to Excel and how your reports go to Excel. I'm going to show you how to edit um, and design a simple report and how to add fields um, and then from Excel, I'm just going to go in and show you how from an Excel side of things, how you can integrate Sage 50 into Excel, um, how to create a new user and save the report and where to save it uh, from, from the Excel side. Okay. And from there, I'm going to go straight into the software. So here is my Sage 50. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to run through so, a, some, a couple of simple filters between uh, customer suppliers and your audit trail. So first of all, within customers, if we click on filter, um, you have the option to filter on, on your customer listing. So this is what you're seeing on screen at the moment. You can see at the top, I have all records, which is at the moment 21 of my customers that are available. So I just want to see any customers that have a balance. So under join, if I put in where, under field, I have all the fields listed there that are available to me that I can use my filters for. So if I say my balance and my condition is, and again, you can make it equal to, not equal to. So in this case, I'm going to say it's greater than and my value is zero. And if I hit apply, this just gives me a list of all my customers who have a balance. Now you can see there that I've got 18 of 21 customers. You're probably saying, why would I want to do this? Um, well, first of all, you can you can get a simple report into Excel um, by if you right click, you can customize all your main screen. Um, so if you right click at the top, you can take away certain things. So if you don't want to see the inactive button, if you don't want to see maybe the currency, but you want to add in maybe email or again, last payment, payment due date and so on. Um, if you're using your terms, you can add fields and take away fields. You can then send this to Excel. So it'll be a simple listing report that you can send to Excel. And you can do this throughout. So you can do it within anywhere in your system, customer suppliers, your audit trail, and so on. So that simply sends out a list of my customers with a balance to Excel. 
okay um now you can also do that when you're running reports so if i go in and i run my report my reports are going to report on any filter that i have on okay so if i go in for example and do my age debtors report and i again pick my age debtors analysis summary and i hit preview this will give me a, the criteria values that I want to run my report up to. I'm just going to do everything up to today for our demo reasons. And you can see there that this is my report and it's exactly the same as the listing that I see on screen. So it's only giving me customers with balance. Now, you're probably saying, why would you do this? Um, if you enter in customer payments and you enter in a customer invoice and you don't allocate them to each other, but there might be a zero balance on your system, it will actually show up here. So if you want to get rid of them quickly and easy, you can do a report to, to just show your balances and maybe at a later stage, go back in and do your allocations. Okay, so that's one reason why you want to do it. The other reason would be maybe statements. If you're using a certain statement layout and it's pulling through all transactions, you could filter them out here by just taking your customers with the balance. Okay, so moving on to suppliers, again, uh, just a simple exercise that you might want to through, go through is tidying up your database. Um, so if I want to get all my customers, um, if I just want to show, get some email addresses into my, my supplier listing, um, I don't have them currently, I can go right click on my heading and I can go to email and I can see what email I have. So in this case, I've got one email. So I want to get a list of everyone in Excel that I don't have emails for. So I can go in, I can put my filter on and I can say where my email address does not equal. And in this case, I'm going to use the at sign because the at sign will be in every email. And I have my wildcards before and after it. So that will give me, you know, your name at whatever the address is. .ie. If I hit apply, okay, you can see there that it's taken out the one email address I have. And it's given me 14 or 15 suppliers. Okay, so if I hit apply and hit close, this is just giving me the list of suppliers that I don't have email addresses for. Now, again, I might want to take away everything because I don't need all this information for this exercise. So I can go to balance, I can take my foreign balance, my currency, my credit limit. Maybe I want to keep my contact name. I don't have full phone numbers in here. Again, that could be part of my exercise, so I could leave that in and I don't need that print or email button. Okay, so this is just giving me a list of exactly what I want, and I wanna be able to populate these two fields, and I'm gonna send them to Excel. Okay, once I go through my exercise of finding, locating the phone numbers, I can then populate my Excel sheet, and populate my email address in Excel, and then I can import that back into my supplier. So it's a really good exercise to tidy up um, your database if you want to give it to somebody else maybe who doesn't even have access to Sage um, and then you could get them to populate the Excel sheet and you can import it back in. Okay so moving on if I show you you're in Autotrail so across the board you can do this and again sorry if you click right click on your heading and you want to go back to your defaults you can use defaults and it'll bring it back and you have your screen the way it was or you can leave it customized to suit you. So moving on to your audit trail. Okay, so if I go into my transactions, this gives me a transac transaction listing or audit trail of all the transactions that go through your system. Now, as you know, again, I've got demo data, so I've only got 1,900 transactions here, but you could have thousands of transactions and you're looking for one thing in particular and you can't find it because of the reams of data that's there. And it's a great way of filtering it out to what you wanna see. So maybe you're looking for a purchase invoice within a date range or a supplier in, uh, a sales invoice within a date range um, or bank transactions, whatever. So you just get familiar with your transaction types and you can search by them. So in this case, I'm going to go in and I've got a filter preset there. I can clear my form and I could do it again. OK, and I could say where my transaction type. is equal to and i'm going to say that it's equal to a purchase invoice okay and then i go down to my next next line and i can say that i want it to be and or okay if i say and and i can see the date and the date i can say that is 
potentially in this case, I want it to be greater than transactions from the 1st of February 2019 and hit apply. Okay, that's just given me the transactions within that range for purchase invoices. So you can see how it filters out to what you're looking for. And again, if I close that, I can then send that data to Excel. And you might be able to find what you're looking for a little bit easier. Again, you do have your search boxes that you can search again on your filter if you need to. But just watch, watch that um, when you're searching. If you're searching on a filter, it will do the double search. Okay. So this has given me 15 transactions and it's straight into Excel. Okay. So it's just a an handy and easy way of filtering our transactions. Okay. I'm not going to save that. So if I go back into my filter, you do have an option here. So I could save that as, and I can save it. And now I do have it saved already. So I've got purchase invoice with date and save. So for any reason that you come in and someone clears that form and hits apply and you have a search there that you want to use more than once, you can click on open and you can select your filter, bring it back up, potentially change your dates, maybe values, you know, customize it to suit you and hit apply again. And that will just put the filter straight back on again. Okay. So if I close that screen, okay, I'm now going to move on to my report design. Okay, so if I go to Tools and down to Report Designer. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a simple report design from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to use this using the wizard within the Report Designer screen. So once you're in Report Design, you can actually, you can go to File, New and Report. Okay, in this case, I'm going to take it from the customer uh, table but again you have all the other tables that are available to you so you have um, it, well, each module available to you and when you select the customer module then in here you have a list of all the tables and within the tables you have the fields available to you so you can select whatever table whatever fields that you want to suit you in this case I'm going to just take a simple sales ledger details I'm going to take the account reference so once you have the field that you want you can write you can click on this little arrow here that will bring it in okay and um, so i have the account reference i'm going to select sorry i don't want to go so i'm going to select name i'm going to select telephone number and i'm going to select balance okay so these are the fields that are available to me you can move these around to suit yourself so if you want you know the account reference at the top maybe you want the name next then your telephone number and then your balance. Okay, so you can sort them whatever you want, but you also can later on, which I'll show you on the report design as well. So when you click on next, if you want to group the report, you can, you can group it here. If not, you can hit next. I'm not going to group it in this case. And um, if you want to sort it, you can. Um, again, if you highlight the field you want to sort it by and move it across, it'll ask you how you want to sort it. If you want it ascending or descending, I'm going to select ascending and hit next and uh, your next screen is your totals so if you've got any any value fields it will automatically put them in as a total if you don't want to total them up you can highlight it and move it back if you do want to total it you can leave it there okay or if you want to add any other ones that didn't come across for any reason okay if you hit next you've got your criteria so this is what you when you're running your report what you want to be restricted by or what you want to filter it by. So if you want to do it within a date range or if you want to do it by, you know, certain customers, you can. And to enable it, you just literally click on the double click on your state. And at the moment, they're all disabled. So you can hit the drop down menu and you can select enabled. Once you have that selected, you can click on next. It gives you your report design options. So I'm going to give you a report name. So customer list by balance and again I'm just going to in thin book customer list by balance okay and again you've got templates if you've got existing reports designed and you have them in a certain format you can use these templates to base your report on and um, I'm not going to in this case I'm going to just finish it and it gives you your fields that are available to you now you can see that the fields are there so within your detail, you've got your fields that are available to you. And then at the top, you've got your report header, which is your headings. 
Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to customize this or move them around to suit you. So first of all, my telephone number is very big. So I'm just going to make that again, resize the fields to suit me. That will also give me, so if I do the same with my name and my reference and my balance. That gives me a bit of room to move my balance. So you can just click your balance and it's going to take the heading with you and your total and move it where you want it to go now. Okay, I'm going to make my page just a little bit bigger here, just give me a bit more room to move with. Now I've got a double text box there, so I'm just going to delete one of them. And I'm going to move up my text, I'm going to move up my balance to keep them in line with everything else. Okay, and I'm going to move down my headings. Okay, so that's just lining them all up to suit you. Okay, and it's just literally clicking. And once you click on the field, you see it gives you lines of where you want to align them to. And again, you can highlight everything and you could use your format and alignment if you want to a left align, right align. So it's just another little way of aligning your fields. Okay, uh, once you have the report the way you want, you can then save it. So if you go to File, Save As, now you can see straight away that my, my, my Save button, button is grayed out. It's also grayed out here, okay, because you can't save over any existing Sage reports. You have to save it as a new report. Okay, so if you go to File and Save As, okay, so it will then ask you where you want to save it to. Now, by default, it's a customer report, so it's going to go into My Customer Reports. Okay, and in this case, I've got one named already. So I've got Pinbrook customer list with balance. I'm going to override that. I'm going to say yes. And this is my new report. Okay. If I make any changes, I can then save it as, a, as, as an existing, it will let me override it because it's a new, brand new report. So if I close out of that screen and go back into my customer listing and click on reports and go into my customer reports, you'll see that I've got my Pembroke customer list with balance there. You can right click here and change the name and description if you wish. So this gives you the com company, the, the report name and the report description. Okay, and then your file name is over on the right hand side, which is what I called it, which is Pembroke customer list with balance. Okay, and I can then preview that report. Okay, and it's again, it's a simple report, account reference, account name, phone number and balance. And you can populate this into Excel like you can any of your reports. You've got this Excel button. Okay. Now you do have another option when you're doing reports is instead of doing them from scratch, you can actually edit an existing report. Now most reports in the system. Um, that one. Most reports in the system that there that you can edit them and you might find a report that there were a, that really suits you but it just is missing a couple of fields or you want to add a couple of fields or maybe it's too much information and you want to take it away so i'm just going to show you that now on an existing report so if you go into in this case i'm going to take the day report book report because it is something that was requested recently and what it was the customer wanted to get um a five percent value a value five five percent of the net value for any paid invoices. Okay, so I have a report there for paid invoices. So I'm going to edit that. Which brings me into the report design. Okay, so I first of all, I need a bit of room here. Um, I could move it to landscape or reconfigure it completely. Um, but there's a lot of information here that I don't need for, for this report. So I'm going to take out the details that I don't need. I don't need my tax amount, my gross amount are paid this period. So I go in, I highlight the fields that I don't want, and I'm going to hit delete on my keypad. And that will just get rid of any of the fields that I don't want. And that also gives me a bit of room to play with. So if I highlight all my fields um, right up to my invoice reference, 
And I'm going to move them all across a little bit because I want to add two fields to this. I'm going to add my extra reference and I'm going to add a formula in to give me 5% of my net value. Okay, so that's now giving me a room. I'm going to put my percentage here and I'm going to put my X reference here. So to add, first of all, my extra reference, I need to add a data field. Now I can add data field in my keypad here. If I click this button, it gives me an X and I click where I want it to go. Now for any reason you don't have these, as in you have the shortcuts hidden, you can go to toolbox and you've got add data field. Okay, it brings you to the same thing. So I click on a blank space of where I want it to go and it gives me a list of my available fields. Now, you have a couple of ways of getting them. You can browse. I know it's called extra reference. So extra reference. Or I could click on my search box at the top. I could click find. Okay. So that's, I know it's going to be way too big. So again, I'm going to resize that to suit me. And you can see on the body of my text where all my data information is going, the font is a bit different. So again, I can change that. Okay, and I can do one or two ways. I can highlight it and I can see there that this one is not bold and not underlined. So if I just literally go in, no, I don't want to change my headings to be the same and underline is gone. So that's keeping it consistent with the rest of my fields. You also have the option here is just do the drop down menu to keep it the same as so it's what font type you want. You want it to be the same as the body, your same as your details and so on. So you have an option of doing both. Okay, so next I want to put in a heading to that. I don't have a heading. And again, I can add a text field or I can copy an existing text field. So if I take account reference, for example, and I copy and paste, and I move it across above my account ref, and again, you can see my, arrow, my lines are helping me line it up. And if I double click in on it, I can then change the details to say X, extra ref okay and i can make it a little bit bigger to x there so i just take okay so i've got my extra reference so that's how simple it is to add um, a field and a heading field so a, an actual data field and a text field so now i want to add a formula field so if I go back up to my toolbox, I have an option here to add expression, okay? And again, once I add expression, I get my, my cross again. So I click where my cross to go, I want it to go, and it gives me an expression editor. Now, I know the field that I want to put the expression editor on is net amount, okay? If you know what, what table it's in, you can start typing it. So, so it's audit header, audit underscore split okay and then I can say the net amount or you can browse for it so you have an option down here so I've got my audit header I know it's an audit split I know it's net amount and I can add it in now in this case now it's added in both so I'm just going to take that one and just put in one so I've got my audit split net amount and I want to multiply that by zero point there are five, which will give me 5% of my net amount. Okay, it's that straightforward. Once you click OK, it then brings it into your field. It's called expression one. And again, I can resize it to suit. And I can bold and underline it or take it off to match the rest of your text. And again, if I want to add a heading to that, I can add text field where I want it to go. And I just can put it, give it a value. So 5% net amount. Or whatever you want to call it. And again, if I want to match them to the rest of my fields, I can then bold, underline it, and make sure that the font is the same. Make sure you have the box highlighted when you do that. So bold and underline. Okay, and they're all eight. Make it eight. Okay, and that's your, your field. Now you can go a step further at this. So I've got my field in, so I've got my expression in. That is 5% of my net amount, but I want to total it as well. 
So if you again highlight that field, copy and paste it and bring it down onto the bottom under your footer. And then you've got to make sure that you have it the function marked as sum. Okay. So within your properties, you've got the function field over here and you can take an average minimum max. So I want to sum this in this case. Okay. So my report is pretty much ready the way I want it. So again, you can save it. So it is an, ex exist an existing report. So you can't overwrite the original. So if you go to file and save as, it's going to create a new report for you. And again, you can call it whatever you want. Okay, so I'm going to just take out the copy of and I'm going to call it Pinbook Net Amount with 5%. Uh, the file names don't like the percentage signs, that's why I'm just typing it in. Okay, so if I close that report, okay, and now go back into my customer reports, you can see over on the right hand side, it's the third one down. I've got my file name and it's Pinbrook Net Amount with 5%. And I can right click on that now and I can get change the name and description. So, Pinbrook Report. Net amount paid invoices with 5%. Okay. That will change my description. And I can then preview that report. Again, you've got your date range that you can preview the report for. And that's giving me my extra reference. So you can see there, I've got my X reference in and I've got my 5% of my net amount. And again, you have the option to report that to Excel. Okay, so any reports that you have, you can send them to Excel. Any of your screens that you have, you can send them to Excel. So that it really is flexible with Excel. And once you have it in Excel, you can certainly import things back in. Okay, so moving on from that, from a Excel point of view, okay? So if we open up Excel, you can integrate the other way around. So you've got Excel open, okay? And in here, you have a button at the top called Sage. Now, you will have this button, when you install Sage, it will automatically add it into your add-on. So it should be available, available to you automatically. If it's not available to you, you might need to add it through your add-ons in Sage. And if it, and for any reason it's not, maybe there's a compatibility issue between your Excel and the version of Sage that you're on. Um, but certainly it should be available to everyone if you're on the right versions. Um, you can always give us a call if you need us to check that out for you. Okay, so from your, from when you're in the Sage button, you've got an option for the Sage applications. So this is the Sage applications that are available to you to report on. So this is Sage 50 that we're gonna use. Uh, your companies, so select company, if you hit the drop down menu, you've got your name, the company. So I've been in my company demo data, but if you want to add a company, it is as straightforward as clicking on add company. And it gives you the companies that are available to you um, that are on your system. It will pick it up through the connections. Okay, so here I've got two companies available. So I'm going to go into my demo data. Okay, so next you need a username. Now I would recommend that you create a new user for Excel. And you do that in Sage. Once you're logged in as Sage as manager, you can go to settings and access rights. Okay. And once you're in as access, your access rights, you can create a new user. And I have one here. You click on edit. If you want to change the password, you can. I do recommend that you have um, a user for it with a password. So I have a user here called Excel. So I'm going to log in. And the password that, you have, yeah, that you've entered for, for that data. So once you've logged into your company, you have your reports that are available to you. So if you click on the drop down list, there's a list of all the reports that are there. Um, and I'm going to show you in a few minutes where you save them to. But just to run through a few simple reports, so I'm going to select my profit and loss report. Okay, it's my first sheet. Now be careful if you put your cursor halfway across the screen, that's the right where the report is going to start from. So I'd always recommend that you start it from A1 um, at the top of your screen. And if you click on insert, again, it's taking the details from Sage. So it's your, your criteria values that you want to report on. So you 
can change the date you want to report on and click OK. OK, so that's my profit and loss. Now I can rename this tab and call it my, my profit and loss. Oops, sorry. Okay, if I open up the next tab, I could say maybe I want to run my trial balance. And again, if I click on insert, use my date range is the same. And it inserts my trial balance. And again, I can rename this tab. Okay, and then again, if I go again, and maybe I want to take my balance sheet. Okay, but in the next tab, my balance sheet and insert. Okay, and into the date range. Rename that to balance sheet. Okay, so I've got my, my three reports there that I want to report on. Now, what, what you can do here is if you file and you go to save as and save the reports, I'm just going to save them in my Excel folder and I going to save them as my Sage Management Reports. Okay, so I've got my reports there ready to go. So if I come out of here and go back into my Sage and enter in a batch transactions, or in this case, I'm just going to do a batch invoice. Any customer, I'm going to do it to my nominal core 4,000, which is my general sales. And I'm just going to enter in 1,500 tax and so on. Okay, and close. So I've actually changed the values there. And just to show you how easy it is and how quick it is to refresh, if I open up my Excel now and I open up the reports that I just saved, so I've got my profit and loss, my balance sheet, trial balance and balance sheet. If I go back into Sage, I open up my company and I log back in and click OK. So my general sales was 4,000. If I now hit refresh, Okay, you can see that it changes the values, but it also changes them across the board. So it's going to take the same criteria as you've originally say, so you don't go through uh, running the reports each time. So you can have a template of reports saved and ready to go and run them from Excel, which is a really handy feature. Now, you're probably going, where do I save these reports to? Because you've got a list of reports here that are available, but you don't know how to get them in there. Um, and again, the easiest way is within your Sage 50. Okay, if you go into help and about, okay, and you have your data report open up uh, the, where your data directory is. And within here, you've got a company file. And if you go to that company level, you've got a full file here for reports. Open up your reports and you've got a folder for Excel. And that's where you save all your reports. So that's the reports are there at the moment. So if you've customized any reports and you want to run them in Excel, you can save them in here. Okay. Okay, so that was our demo of Sage 50 into Excel and of course Excel into Sage 50. And I'm just going to open up if you've got any questions. Okay, so there's a few questions that have come through there. Um, so the first one is, is what is the filter box that you showed, be, the, the search box beside the filter box that you mentioned? What's the difference? What is it and what's the difference? Okay, again, I'm just going to, your, your search box is a keyword search. So when you're in your Sage and you enter in a keyword search within here, it's filtering at anything. So you could have something within the data that you want. So it could be a name or what have you. So if I clicked on Lynch there now, first of all, before you do any searches, just make sure you clear your forms. And if I hit apply, I can then do my search and it's only going to search on my keyword, which will give me, in this case, my, my Lynch. So it's anything within the contact at all, it will search on. Now, if you've got a filter on, it will search on your filter. So just be careful of that. Make sure that you turn off any filters before you use your search box. 
Okay, but that's a search box. So it's a quick search. A filter is actually if you want to get a batch of transactions and you want to group them, you can use your filter. Okay. Um, is there a limit to the number of reports that you can design? Uh, no, there isn't. You can create as many reports as you want. As long as you've got enough space on your PC or your server or wherever your data is stored, you can save as many reports as you want. Okay. Um, okay, does the backup or does the backup automatically back up your reports area? Uh, no, you will need to tick the box for this. And again, I'm just going to quickly jump back into the software to show you where this is. So when you're doing your backups, if you go into file and backup, okay, just ask me to close all my windows. You do have an option when you're backing up to tick, so you've got your data file. So you need to make sure that you tick any reports or if you've, or if you've designed any layouts, um, back up them as well. It might be worthwhile, you know, if you make any major changes to your reports and layouts and maybe back up them once a month or, you know, they wouldn't have to be in your daily backups, but I would recommend certainly any changes that you make that you, you take a fresh backup for them. And you could rename it. You could just, just take reports and backups and call it reports backup okay um where do you save the reports again and just show me quickly okay so someone just wants to show where we save the reports so again if you go into help and about in your stage 50 it brings you into your program details so under program details you've got data directory if you click here it'll open up where your data directory is so you don't want to save them, you want to go back a level. So you want to go back to your company level, which will give you a list of all your companies. And within it here, you've got a folder called reports. And in reports, you've got a folder called Excel. And that's where you save all your Excel reports. Okay. Uh, if you do have any questions or any further questions, please, please feel free to email them to us. Um, our contact details on screen and thank you for your time today.